Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to be exploring a little bit of the camera rail rig, camera rig rail, I guess you call it, and trying to think outside the box a little bit and using these tools in a variety of ways, not just in ways that you might be predisposed to use them because of their name. Just because it's called a camera rig rail doesn't mean that's the only thing we can put on it. And if you think about what the camera rig rail is, it's just a spline that has the visualization of a rail on it. So it's just an easy to use spline, really. So to get started on this, we're just going to go into the third person template and we're going to go create. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to animate a Mixamo character in a walk turn instead uh, and using the the rig rail and the reason I'm doing this is that I was going to do a tutorial on combining Mixamo animations and I was trying to combine a walk with a right turn and as I was, I was messing around with it it didn't look quite right and it looked a little weird and I thought you know why can't we just put this thing on a rig rail and cur curve the rail and then just make them walk and I think that it looks actually a little bit better. And so this is just kind of a, an experiment, but we're playing around a little bit, but I think this is a faster way to animate in some turns of a player character, of a character that's walked. So anyway, to get started on this, we're in the third person template and we're gonna go up to file, new level, and we're just gonna go into the basic blank level. And I want this level just because we have a lot of room up here. And we're going to do two things. You have to go into Mixamo. There's a lot of tutorials about how to do this. I feel like I keep repeating myself. And, but basically, you got to go into Mixamo, find a character, download it in T-Pose, and then go pick some animations. And then the animations that you download, just download them without the skin because you don't need the skin. You've already got the skin. So I've already done that. So I'm not going to belabor that point. But um, what we're going to do is I'm going to right-click, and I'm just going to go to Import to game and if I go into downloads here I've got my character and then I've also got this walk one but I'm going to import the character in t-pose first and we'll go open and the only caveat here is that under advanced where it says use to that's actually means to uh, to is the t-pose as a reference pose so we do want that and then other than that, we just go ahead and import all. And I'm on the content level, and it all comes in. We'll get this message about smoothing groups. We don't really have to worry about that. And then what we're going to do, once we've downloaded that, our skeletal rig, essentially, is what we've done. We're going to go back and then import into level. Well, no, maybe I want this one. I, I guess we go this way. Import to game. We're going to go ahead back to my downloads and we're going to get just a walking cycle. And that's a, that's the, when you download the walking one, make sure the walking is in place. Don't get the, the one where they're moving across the ground. That's the only, and it's see how it's already paired to the skeletal rig because we have it in here already. It's already paired to it. So that's all we need to do. And we just go import all. And then it brings in the walking animation. And in fact, I could just drag that into the scene right now. And if I fly down here, well, my third person might come in here. But you'll see there's our, our character walking, just like that. Right? I just got the mannequin out of there because, I don't know, I'm on a kind of a mannequin kick right now. So anyway, there's that. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull him out of the scene because you can see that that's already working. Now here's what we're going to do. So we're going to go get the camera rig rail and we'll talk a little bit about how it works. It's a little tricky at first because you got to make sure you're selecting the right points. But once you kind of play around and practice with it, you know, give yourself 15, 30 minutes of playing around with it. We come up here to the place actors window. If you don't see this place actors, go to windows and it's under there and just enable it. And we'll go camera rig rail right here and drag it onto the scene. And like I said, this is just a, a spline is all it is, but it has this added visualization of a rig, a dolly rail, you know, um, so that you commonly see in filmmaking. But you can actually just turn that off so you don't even see this. But I, I kind of like having it there, so... So what's confusing about this is that there's 
actually comes in. This is now they've upgraded this tool, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial about that rig rail, which is a little bit a lot more sophisticated. And it gets into some things that are really, really interesting dealing with the sequencer because it it's hard to explain some of this, but basically you have to think about like what's driving this. And so a lot of times when we create a sequence, we put it on autoplay and we have to drag it into the scene and our sequence will automatically play when we hit play in the game. Well, what's interesting about the new rig rail that we're going to be exploring is it has something called a drive mode. And it plays independently of being on autoplay or playing on the game. So it's really, really interesting. So the new rig rail will automate itself on its own with no autoplay or anything. So it's, it's really a different beast in a way. But this is a good one to get started with, just to understand the basic controls. So we come in here with two spine points. You can't really see the, the first one because it's hidden under this thing. And so this, all these two things almost look like key points, but these aren't. These are handles, bezier handles that we can use to bend these points. So it comes in with, with by default, with just two spine points. Now to add more spine points, what we're going to do is, well, my camera's going way too fast. So what I do when I first come in sometimes is I fly around and then I just turn my scroll wheel backwards to get get myself under control and then I just to a speed that I like. So I don't ever use this control anymore. I always just use the scroll wheel. So anyway, what we're going to do is with the second point selected, I'm going to hit alt, click and drag and I'm making another point. And in the new rig rail, actually the distance between these points, if the if all the points are even, then the rig will be green. And but depending on the distance between these points determines the speed. But in this old rail, it doesn't matter the distance. It just travels at a uniform rate. And from the first spline point, which is zero, to this spline point is adjusted numerically on a scale from zero to one. So you'll see that in a minute here. If you come down here where it says rail controls and it says current position on rail, the, this only goes up to one. But you see how the, the tripod holder goes all the way to the end and it's on one? So zero to one, no matter how long this rail is, this spline is, the total distance numerically is represented from a zero to a one. It's basically been normalized on a scalar, I guess is one way you could say it. So anyway, what I'm trying to do here is we're just trying to make like a an elbow shaped curve here. So I'm gonna speed up my camera a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is make some spline points and just bend it around here. So that's what we're going to do. So, and you just, this is really good just to practice with because it isn't, I don't know, it's one of those things that's a little weird to get used to. But then once you get the basics down, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. So we're just creating spine points right now. So I'm just holding Alt, click and drag. I create one spine point, click and drag, Alt, make another spine point, Alt, press Alt, make another spine point. And now I'm going to go this way. So I click Alt and go make a spline point this way. Alt, press Alt, make another spline point. Press Alt, make another spline point. Alt, click and drag, make another another spline point. And if I have it selected and I don't press Alt, I'm just dragging out the, the spline point. And now let's say this corner over here is too sharp. Well, this is where we can start playing around with our handles here. So if I, that's the spline point, that's the handle. So if I click and drag, see how I'm bending this curve now? But maybe that's not the one I want to bend. I want to click this point and then I can get its handles. So let's see how I can, whoops, I messed up. What did I click over there? Let's click that point, click the handle then, and let's see how I can bend this. See how I'm bending out that cur curve a little bit wider? And I can select this point. So if I pull it back, I can make it a little bit wider. And now these points just seem off completely. So I can just click and drag them out, you know. So you have it takes some practice getting used to this whole thing. So that's getting kind of weird, but I can I can literally straight whoops. What did I do there? See, I'm making a big old mess. So 
So I'm going to hit control Z. Let's control Z back. Okay, there we go. I kind of goofed that up. So hit control Z. Don't forget control Z. So this, obviously this bend is not what I'm looking for. So let me see how I can shorten this up. Can I get that bend? I think I'm just going to have to move this. So I can, no, that's moving the whole thing. So I'm trying to get that handle. Click it again. I might have to come over here and do this. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So I just need to adjust these points in, in general, maybe without even bending these handles. So I don't like this curve here. I'm trying to even out this curve and make it more of a turn. So you just come in and experiment with those handles. So I don't quite like that, but let me see if I can smooth it out here. A little bit. Does it make any difference if I shorten it up? There's just a little tiniest little glitch there that I like to kind of smooth out. I'm not sure where that is coming from, that little bend there. Let me get this point. Let's see, click on it. And see, I can smooth that out a little bit. Yeah, well, there is it's still a little bit of a bump. There, that's pretty good, you know. Okay, let's just say that's good enough, okay? So you just have to practice. I Obviously, you can see I need some practice myself with these curves. So, But you select these points, and you can click them, drag them, and click the handles, and then you can bend, bend this thing. So that's the pathway that the character is going to walk on, this pathway. Okay, so we got that out of the way. So you just have to come in and play around with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag our character here onto the scene. And once he's on the scene, we're going to click over here in the outliner and child him to the camera rig rail. And then we're going to zero him out here and he'll put him right here, right on the origin there of that first key point. Then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate him on the yaw. I guess we got to go this way. What is that? I think we want 270. So let's see. 270. And if we go back to the rig rail, there's this one called lock orientation to rail. Now we've got our character, we've got our rig rail, and we're making some progress here. Okay, so what we're going to do now, what we're going to do now is we are going to create a sequence. So I'm going to right click, go to level sequence. We're going to select this and we're going to get our rig rail. It's selected in the scene. Then we're going to get our actor here and we're going to select him in the scene. And then you'll see when we come to the rig rail, we click here, you'll see we've got this current position on rail and that's what we're going to select. And now here's the interesting part. And this is what you have to, this is what you're going to have to play around with is determining the speed because we have to adjust either the length of this spline or the speed at which the character is walking to make it look like he's not walking, he's not slipping and sliding on the ground. So, but let's, what we're going to do is let me hit control and the scroll wheel. We're going to zoom out here a little bit. We're going to make this a little bit longer animation. And then what we're going to do is we're going on the, with this selected here, that row, we're going to put a keyframe. Then we're going to drag, we're going to click this and put that at the end. And then we're going to add another keyframe here, but then we're going to jump that up to one. So now if we hit, if I hit play actually on the sequence, or if I come back to the beginning and hit play, you'll see our character moving along the spline and he's keeping his orientation. He's keeping our, his orientation 
to this to the rail, right? So now all we have to do is come in here and on animation select the walking animation and it for some reason oh it came over it came in way over here so all we have to do is click and drag it over here and just drag it the length of our animation now if I hit here and I hit play you'll see he's walking he's actually walking pretty well along the length of the spine that's pretty good Yep, and then all we'd have to do is just film it. And this is a lot better way of doing it than if I tried to combine a walking with a turn. So it's just something to think about. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'm trying actually to get to 5,000 by the end of the year. I've had this channel a long time and I'm just it's just a thing. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time. Hey, one last thing I wanted to mention is if you notice when you're watching the video that the character's feet are slipping or sliding, one thing that you can do is if we come into the content browser and go into the walking animation itself, you can uh, play with the rate and either speed it up or slow it down. Just make sure you save it. And then that should take care of the slipping or sliding. And then you can also adjust it by adjusting the length of the rig rail itself. But the easiest way is just to speed up or slow down the character to take care of that. Any kind of slippage that you notice. When I was watching the video back, I noticed there was a little bit of slippage. And I forgot to mention that you can adjust this, the walking speed. And that'll take care of that. So anyway, that's all I wanted to add. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.